closed. Um, are there any apologies for absence? Uh, no, I mean, um, Tina, we didn't have any response to the invite. Uh, Councillor Adam, which is running late. Really? Okay, and for the sake of the viewers at home and everybody else, <laughs> we'll go through the table. Mine, uh, I'm the chair, my name is Councillor Owen Pritchard. Uh, Roger Kirscher, Assistant Director of Resources. And Barry McKay, Fund Director from Barry Wadding. Uh, Chris Longley, uh, Park Corp, I'd like to do with Barry Wadding. Thank you, Mr. Wadding. Senior Accountant, thank you. Carol Hunt, Director of Corp Services. Councillor Mark Allison. I'm Gwyn Isaac, I'm Prime Secretary of the GMB Trade Union in Burton. Um, are there any declarations of interest? Uh, so the minutes of the previous meeting, uh, I move to agree. Seconder. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Happy. Uh, quarterly performance review. Um, so to the substance, um, if if we look at the market, which is <coughs> page six, paragraphs three point one and three point two. Um, it indicates that global economic growth has continued to decelerate among the uncertainty associated with global trade and technology conflicts, although sharply lower bond yields should provide some cushion for cut consumers and businesses against other headwinds. The range of potential growth inflation outcomes has risen as this is historically long economic cycle extends. Um, it then goes on to talk about the notable shift on focus on the outlook for monetary policy and economic growth earlier in the quarter. Uh, it does expand on that slightly. So, but within our con the context of that, our performance is indicated on page four, paragraph two point two. So, over the three months, over the last quarter, uh, over three months of the thirtieth of September, twenty nineteen, the total fund assets returned two point seven percent compared to the target of one point three percent. So, one point four percent outperformance. The fund's total market value increased by 6.7 million over the quarter from 763 million to 769.7 million. Um, and over the last 12 months, the fund performance is 8.4% and the three year annualized performance is 8.9%. This is comp compared to an annual target of 5.5. Um, I do want to draw attention to page six, paragraph. 2.4. I will expand on this slightly in the closed session. But this is uh, to do with our strategic exposure in, with respect to the strategic allocation. Uh, I draw attention to the fact that the global equities, uh, paragraph 2.5 of the chart, is uh, global equities, the top row is the actual weight is 52% compared to the strategic all allocation of 40%. Uh, our private credit actual weight is 1% compared to the strategic allocation of 7.5 and the infrastructure is 2.1 compared to strategic allocation of 7.5 again. Um, so we haven't yet got to our targeted strategic allocation. Uh, the re reason for this exposure is mainly timing, moving the UBS passive to infrastructure and private debt. Um, as at the 31st of December, all things, other, uh, all things being equal, the UBS passive was reduced to 64 million, and this uh, brings the total equity exposure down to 49. We've still got the target of 40 percent. Also worth bearing in mind that the equity market has been doing particularly well, and therefore every time we move out of it, it continues growing, and therefore the strategic allocation always sort of goes higher than it would be. Um, so we continue to working towards the strategic allocation. Um, all of that is to note, uh, does anyone want to raise any points or comments on quarterly performance review? Great. Um, moving on to agenda point five, uh, that's the training policy and plan. This is for us to agree. Um, Nima or Roger, would anyone like to discuss, explain what's in the training policy and plan? Well, um, I think it's a requirement the um, pension committee and the, uh, the advisory panel and the board need to have certain training in place as requirement of the DPR and all by regulation. So this is a this is the plan to see which area we will cover and also what are we trying to do in the coming financial year and in each quarter, which sections we are going to cover. So this is the board. Now, 
Page 27. Yeah, you just uh, put a uh, draft plan for the next five quarters, <coughs> what we are going to cover in the training. So, this, uh, and we will uh, try to have this training beginning of the committee meeting, not allocate a particular certain day. We'll take half an hour, the beginning of the committee meeting, or start it earlier. And, and come, <coughs> coming um, quarter, the training will be more important because we will be looking into the investment strategy review, are we going to change in asset allocation or to... Hi, um, I'm just going to check. Yeah, I think this is... Which meeting are you going to look for? Which meeting are you going to look for? Next door, next door. Next door, next door. Do I, you're going to the more interesting one. Don't worry. Um, so, the training is more important because we are... We are not expecting to change much on the current investment strategy because it's still fairly new, but we will look at the options whether we are, we are going to increase any allocation of property or infrastructure or any of the underperforming asset classes. So in that case, we will be planning to deliver training on different asset classes and also how to implement, so that will become the coming process. Okay. Um, Mark, are you both happy with the training policy? <coughs> oh, can I just find a bit? We've got, we've had to move the March date to April. Yeah. So it's just fine that the first training will take place. So for the first, I can give you more. On the first April training, we are planning to give an overview of the investment strategy review, what we are going to look at it. Because following the valuation, the next step is we will be looking at investment strategy. Is it good enough for IT? Do we need to change anything? So before we look at the strategy, we just will be providing a training to see this is where the asset classes and what they are bringing to the strategy, how which direction we can move, and also in generally how the investment and the market are performing, how we should look at our investment strategy in particular. So the training will be ready. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone want to raise anything else on the training policy and the plan? In which case, can we uh, move to the work plan, please, Nima? Yes. This is, again, as a sort of, um, just to give uh, the uh, pension plan advisory panel an indication what we will be planning to do in the coming quarter so that we can plan those. And this is also help the officers to plan their training needs on what's coming on. So the most of the things are standard ones, the performance and the training will take place. So the coming quarter, obviously, as we said, this one is the valuation is the main one which will take place, how, well, how the fund performed and where we are with the valuation. And the next quarter, we will be looking, key, keenly looking onto the investment strategy and also we will be looking at two of the procurement because, uh, just for your information, so the investment advisor and the um, actual one because we haven't talked for some time because it, as a routine we need to look into that procurement. So we will be having some training on that one, how we will be doing it and what is the process. And in the coming quarters we will be informing about that process. So these are the one, the key activities we have for the next six to nine months. So in addition to this, there is anything. Uh, on change on the legislation or something, then I'll be updating the panel as required. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions or issues with the work plan? Just a, an addition, we'll have the out term. Yeah, quarter one as well. Yeah. Of course, we always have the form for the And one more thing I'd like to have you going forward, I'm going to probably link the pension board and the uh, panel a bit more, probably bring some update from the board what they are discussing to the panel and vice versa, inform the board what we discuss here, so if there is more need for currency, we currently we see very less or no link between the committee and the panel. So. Okay. Yeah. And that's something without the governance review yeah. that we'll discuss later, we'll have to address. Uh, moving on to agenda point uh, seven, any other business, and again, this is just for part one of the meeting. Um, the only thing I'd like to raise is uh, the issue of carbon exposure. Uh, Nima's agreed to update us on, has agreed with Mercer to update us on the progress of the carbon exposure. 
since we carried out the analysis, we've made good progress on the two red flagged portfolios. Uh, Aberdeen Emerging Market moved LCIF, uh, um and this reduced our carbon exposure and in the meantime increased our investment with LCIF to 55%. Uh, so that's good news. And then UBS passive portfolio, we're gradually reducing the investment value since July. This now has now reduced to 33 million. So one of the things we highlighted last summer was our car, uh, the sort of rag rating for carbon exposure on various funds. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but I'd quite like to see the carbon exposure uh, rating yeah. included on these summary sheets. Um, I think because they're quite good um, in that we have, we have, they're very good for understanding what we are. They're, they're literally two pages on each of our investment funds. Um, if it's agreed, uh, are you happy that the carbon exposure um, using the criteria and the strategy agreed last summer, um, the RAG rating is included in the bottom of that? Mm -hmm. In terms of um, seeing it um, through obviously the overall picture, mm -hmm. so having it sort of noted within as the report is definitely In which case, anyone? Well, I haven't really um, had an opportunity to think about the implications of that might be. Um, so, um, I mean, I would hope that there'd be something in the report that would give a, um, an update on um, on the rag and exposure on um, on carbon emissions generally. Um, whether it needs to be done for, on each separate page for each of the reports, I don't really know. The thing that I'd be most con I'm concerned about is um, obviously some um, some of the plans will have some sort of uh, carbon um, exposure, um, but we'd need to be convinced that each of the companies that were being invested in had a progressive attitude towards reducing carbon use, and that would be the, the important thing. Um, whether that can be communicated by Red Amber or... Uh, so the Red Amber Green system was the system advised by Mercer last summer, um, and it's the one that we adopted. It's um, looking at each of the funds. Um, it doesn't commit us to... It, 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 it isn't an indicator on, it, it, on its own statement of composite indicator. We could still say with a, a, any specific fund. Even if it is a red, um, we can still stay with it if it's given the returns that we want. All it is is to make us aware of the specific exposure. And it's different from the divestment. It's actually a calculated as a, as a per tonnage metric taking into account the fact that even if you don't dig stuff out of the ground, you can still have a high carbon exposure. So it's not, a, it's not something that commits us to anything. Um, it's something that only indicates using what I think is now the preeminent widely accept, accepted kind of um, metric for judging individual funds carbon exposure and just superimpose it. So rather, all we're talking about doing really is shifting it from two separate reports. So instead of Mercer giving us a, a what, what looks like a table as we saw last summer with a rad rating yeah. for each of the funds, but we just have the indication on this one as well. So we know where we are with, it, with, with respect to each specific fund. Doesn't sound like a great, <coughs> a great deal of difference then. Um, well, it, 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 it isn't, it's just bringing it all into one page so we see it quarterly at the same time. Okay. We might not be able to see much progress uh, every quarter because we are not going to measure it, but at least it will give us an indication like where they are, the manager. We are, we are, when we did the analysis last year, how it is. So after probably one year or something, then we can say, okay, some we have reduced it by reducing the investment or moving the investment. It's still some of them are red or amber, then it will help us to make a decision. Well, okay, thank you. Um, does anyone else have any other business before we move on to future dates? Great then. Um, so the future meeting date, I think it's 15th of April? Yes, it's yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, in which case, uh, that's the end of part one, uh, and resolved that the public are excluded from the remainder of the meeting as the reports being discussed are exempt from disclosure. Thank you. <laughs>